The problem with moral thinking is obligation. Understand obligation, not as a moral construct, but just as an idea, as a function of action. Theologians have derived a philosophical model of command structure. Thou shall not perform said bad thing. But this command structure breaks down in the face of the complexity of reality. Case in point, thou shall not kill. What of war? Are you, or not, are you not killing? Now, if you look in the literature of the Catholic Church, you'll find a huge dissertations or thoughts on the whole idea of a just war. When is war just? Because this is a problem, and they fully recognize it, philosophically recognize this in the Church, the Catholic Church. It's a part of their canons. So, so what's the solution? Well, now, even Sam Harris got stuck in the quagmire of obligation because he feels like, well, well, morality is about what we have to do, right? These are the obligations we have to the rest of society. These are the, these are the codes that we should all live by. And he forgot a very important part, and that is that all obligations are based upon wants. What do you want? Okay, if you want to die, then, you know, we're probably not going to have a very constructive conversation. Or if you want to kill me or destroy society, again, we won't have a very constructive conversation about building society. You will be trying to undermine my attempt to build a constructive society. So it's very important that we understand what people want. So what is your objective in creating the system. Now, most of us agree we want to survive, but we need to start from that point and realizing if there is an obligation, is it an obligation to tell us what you want? Is it is to tell each other, hey, these are my motives. This is what turns me on. This is what motivates me to get up in the morning. And the reason, and that's in we know this is important for a lot of reasons, and people have used this idea of what people want in business to motivate people based on what they want, placing people in uh, job environments that inspire them to be more productive. Why wouldn't this also be true in ethics? If we want an ethical system that works, then we want to be inspired by that ethical system to get our desires met. So as a society, it's not what should you do, it's a question of what do you want. Now, as a matter of negotiation, how do we get there? And that's a functional question. And so I have said to Sam Harris through a tweet, I'm sure he ignores me, but that's okay, that's life. But to you, you will know this, what Sam Harris doesn't know, and this is this. Morality is an engineering problem. Don't take it in the wrong way. I mean, you think of social engineering, oh my God, you're going to social engineer me. No. It has to do with the fact that when you begin to build a system or design a system, you ask the question, what's it for? What do I want? How do you build an airplane? How do you build a spacecraft? Morality is no different. It's a question of what you want. Now, there's a lot of things we don't know in terms of human behavior. You might think of this as the ergodynamics of the emotional human. I mean, what are the emotional underpinnings of a human personality? And by understanding that, we can make the moral system ergonomic towards the psychological makeup of a human. So I really like the idea of thinking about morality as an engineering problem. And I think it's a very functional way of looking at morality. And it's a lot more practical. And you don't even have to get into questions of, well, is this true? I said, well, 
we should probably be asking, will it work? Does it accomplish what we want to accomplish? Now, some people would say that, well, this is a very utilitarian view of it, um, almost communistic. It could be taken to those extremes, but we don't have to. We can ask, we can say, well, okay, I don't want a utilitarian system. Okay, we don't have to have it be a utilitarian system. I don't want it a communistic system. You don't have to have it a communistic system. In fact, I would argue that individualism is a functional attribute and is a very powerful functional attribute because you get the maximized diversity by not telling people who they are, asking them who they want to be, and asking them what inspires them. We can't get everything we want. We know this. But there's no problem in starting with the idea of what do we want? What is the society we want to see? And what can we do to help bring about that society we want? And I don't know that's a bad starting place. I don't think it's a bad starting place. So it, it forces a conversation. So if someone would ever ask you, well, why is conversation important? Because actually, if we want to be moral, we have to have a conversation. We can't just tell people what they should do because of moral obligation. We have to ask them, what do you want? And if we start with what we want at an individual level, we'll have a maximum, a, maxim, a maximizing effect of what the force we have. People won't be doing things because they feel obligated to. They'll be doing them because there's a goal in mind. There's an end. They're doing this for an end. And that helps in teamwork. What does a team want to do? They want to win. So are we on the same team? Now, that is actually a moral question. If you find out that someone's not working towards your end, they're not on your team, right? We can actually say literally, you're not on my team. Now, here's the thing. We can compete head to head, right? We can say, okay, we agree to compete with each other to see who has a better system. You build your system over here, we'll build our system here, and then we'll talk about it down the road to see if we still agree we're on the right track. I like the idea of a competitive um, economic art ethical system where we can compete ethically to say which is more ethical. Why are we stuck on this idea that everyone has to adopt the same ethics out of, out of the gates? Why can't we say, well, these are the ethical frames that we think will work best? And I think being more creative with what ethics can look like would be very useful. So I'd say the number one problem I see in ethical thinking, philosophical ethical thinking, is the concept of obligation. And if you agree, you should really comment on this video and say, I agree. If you disagree, you should say, I really disagree. Because that's how the conversation gets started.